Okay, let's let's ask the the chat this before we get rocking. Okay, around. let's say Black Rifle, we it's in the works. Flaming Dragon, sh- sh- you know, brand of either should it be a coffee like brew, like a ground coffee, like that has that you know is exotic. Flaming Dragon, maybe there's some hints of dragon in there, or should it be candied coffee beans? Can we get get out? <laughs> <laughs> or should it be candied coffee beans that are like? No, wrapped in I was trying cinnamon. to answer you in yeah. musical form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can yeah. You. I just don't. I don't think it's a candy thing. You not a candy, a candy thing. thing. I don't think so. Have you ever had a? It candy feels like coffee? a Guatemalan blend. Like if you yeah, want, no. candy, there's no push. dragons in Guatemala. You don't know that. We, yes, we, I do. We're everywhere. You, you know, know what there is in are. Guatemala? Guatemalans and dragons. No, good coffee. There is good coffee in Guatemala, but that has nothing to do with dragons. You know who made those coffees? You know who flew those beans back to the States? You know what? Not it's dragons. Fam. It's the fence to dragons. Man, those Gua- the you kids, like dragons? The kids in Guatemala are extremely smart. I, every single one of them down there is speaking Spanish. It's incredible. <laughs> They're speaking <laughs> Guatemala. David, you can't laugh before you deliver yeah, the end of the yeah. joke. I was just thinking about it from God, the... God. <laughs> but also, David, let's... Uh, I know we haven't put it on the soundboard yet, but... Oh, you want a fun fact? fact. Oh, I got a good fun one. Fun fact. Facts are fun. On April 20th, 420. David's got a letter. On 420. David's got a letter. <laughs> Sorry. Go, keep going. No, you're good. Yeah, let's, let us 420. Let us Cody Bellinger hit a 420-foot home run. It was his fourth home run in the 20th hit on the season. The question is, was his player prop to hit a home run plus four, 420? Was it? It, it has to be. Like Do you have an answer to that? Huh? If it is, something's up. If No, if it is, answer? if it is. I don't know. Someone said his player prop to hit it was plus 420. I just don't if know. If that's the case, Sounds real. then... Something I need I need to just touch a wall or something just to make sure I'm at where I'm at. That's already crazy though, because that's uh, the Matrix. Baseball gets, stat gets proven every day. Like because Steve did the trivia the other day. And like, would anybody be shocked if Morpheus up, walked yeah, in here right now, huh? just during the show? If just Morpheus walked in here and was like, "Hey, listen, you, you guys are in the Matrix. Red like, pill, follow the pill. follow the White Rabbit." Hmm. Y'all haven't said anything about my vest today. No, it? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna ask Lugan Bill about it when we get him on. Well, what do you, it's what, a good vest. You, you look think? like you, you to me. Yeah, it's a lot of Han Solo vibes. Yeah, right? I feel like you're walking into right. a bar in Tatooine or something. That's like that. the best yeah, possible that's outcome. Go, that's you what I'm going. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Or Just not as cool as Han Solo. Or Chris Hansen's about to show up. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> Got a pack of six hearts, Mike lemonade in my bag. <laughs> Hans likes those. Yeah, I know. But Han Solo, you can Hans is a Han big Solo. Mike's hard guy. Big Mike's hard guy. Definitely. Yeah. That the, ain't Chris Hansen. The college football playoff committee is already discussing a 14-team model. No. Great. That lasted long. Nick Saban says he's going to use his voice to bring about meaningful change in college athletics. And Tom Luganville of ESPN is going to join us Please. to discuss all of that in ACC preview and what he thinks about Blaine's vest. I'm Jay Crane, and welcome to Crane & Company. Now, there are a lot of important questions that we still have to answer. Are aliens real? What came first, the chicken or the egg? But without a doubt, the most important right now is will the new expanded college football playoff end up being more entertaining than March Madness? It's a legitimate question. I mean, now that they're both tournaments with double-digit teams, I mean, hell, we can be going to 14 teams before long in the new college football playoff. And we're not going to know until we actually get to watch the new college football playoff But my gut feeling, at least early, is no. March Madness will continue to be the best postseason sporting event that human beings have ever created. And I will die on that hill. Now, I know that's ironic because football is my favorite sport. We know that. But there's just something magical about March. And to be honest, most of that magic happens in the first few days. It's like American Idol. I want to see the train wrecks, the good stuff, the upsets, and all of it. Now, the playoff won't have as many upsets or the craziness of a UMBC beating a Virginia as a 16 seed against a one seed. And there are so many games all day, wall-to-wall coverage early in the NCAA tournament, that 
plus the randomness of basketball mixed with the jubilation or humiliation <laughs> of how your bracket turns out, but man, that's created an effect that I don't know if it's ever going to be topped. Now, I'm not saying it's an ocean-wide gap between March Madness and the new college football playoff, and I am over the moon about how many more big matchups and games we as college football lovers are going to get. But again, there is just something about March Madness. So let's celebrate both, and I want to hear your thoughts on it, because 2024 is truly the year of the bracket. Speaking about the year, it's been a hell of a past year for David Cohn. Michigan wins a national championship. Yep. They have another kid. Yep. You know, Georgia Southern feeling good about a lot of things right now. But David... March Madness, I know, we, again, we haven't seen the new college football playoff with 12. It's going to be dope. Oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be super dope. All right? I can't wait. Dopest dope ever. But looking at March Madness, and you can love both. You can love both equally. Mm. I believe in that. But to me, I still think March Madness, at least right now, mm. put it a little bit ahead. There's just something about it, David. I can't tell you how excited I am for an expanded college football playoff. It's going to be a lot of fun. But I agree with you on a lot of points. I mean, you can make the college football playoff as big as you want. You could make the entire season a single elimination tournament. You still can't play football games more frequently than once a week, yeah. right? Like, that's still the cadence with which you have to go about these games. Basketball, I mean, you could play every couple of days. You can't recreate the, the madness of all of these teams playing throughout an all-day. Is it the volume? Is that it? Is it the, the volume of it's games? It's the volume the first two days the tournament goes on, yep. right? The first two days, and then the starting to chip away, right, as you get closer to Elite Eight and Sweet 16 and all those sorts of matchups. But then that brings in the upsets. Basketball is always going to be an easier sport for a David versus Goliath upset than football is. A team could just get hot behind the arc and just hit every single shot and upset a team. That happens all the time. So when we see these 15-2 matchups or even 16-1 upsets, sets like that's something that i don't think we're going to be able to see on the football field as frequently that makes march madness as cool yeah i i agree with that 100 percent. And, and blaine and, and again we, we want to know what you think in the chat make sure you hit that subscribe button uh hit that like button as well blaine i when you look at the college football playoff at 12 what i'm going to find fascinating is let's say the 12th seed is like a nine and three sec or big 10 team or, or something like that and then you have that fifth highest rated conference champion, they may be the the sixth seed or the seventh seed, but aren't people still going to be more surprised and view it as a bigger upset if that group of five team, right, beats whatever power five team they're playing as opposed to a, a let's say, a Tennessee gets in there as the 12th seed and they beat the fifth seed, you know, who, whoever that is. Like, is that, is that, are we going to see any crazy upsets in college football as compared to college basketball, at least as close as we can get. No, I don't think so. I think it's a lot easier to win a basketball game than it is to win a football game if you're a group of five team. I really do. I think one ba one guy can win a basketball game by himself. One guy can't win a football game. <clears throat> I'm, so, I'm sorry. When it, co when it comes down to upsets. Jaden Daniels damn sure tried. He tried, but obviously, yeah. I mean, even if Jaden Daniels couldn't even do it, I don't know if it's even possible. So when it comes down to which upsets will you see more, it's going to be basketball. I mean, no doubt about it, because it is basketball. It's easier to win, mm -hmm. regardless of what team you are. But I do think, like this, the 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 football playoff will take over March Madness. You think it'll be a bet? You think, I, it'll, I think be it'll be more entertaining yes. than March Madness? I do. I mean, I, we just love football so much in this country. We we, we do, we're, but we're maybe adding this, and it's like maybe, and it might be just this year, right? Because it's so it's so new, right? The NCAA football games coming out from a viewership standpoint. I think there'll be more viewers watching the playoffs in football. Well, maybe, because again, I love the football regular season a lot more than I like the college basketball regular season. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just the, the, when you look at football and how much we love football, and we love basketball too, but it seems like March is when everybody gets drawn in to college basketball. Like it's such a, it just feels like a big party, like a, like a big sports party that keeps going and going and going. I mean, we've seen FAU make the Final Four, right? We watched the run Loyola Chicago has went on. it. It's just, I don't know. Maybe it's because basketball isn't the most popular sport that this postseason sporting event 
has that much more magnitude. I know that may not make sense to a lot of people. Do y'all kind of see what I'm saying? Maybe it's just yeah. kind of an offshoot of everybody's finally paying attention to it at one time. And filling out your bracket for March Madness, because yeah. of the volume of teams, which you just can't replicate in football, the volume of like having 64 or 68 teams, everyone wants to fill out a bracket. That has become like a cultural phenomenon. Yeah. We talk about it all the time. I mean, people who don't know anything about college basketball, they at least fill out a bracket. And right? they probably see? win. And then they get, they get a lot of the picks right. It's like, the Super Bowl. Even people who don't care about football at all, they'll go to their friend's Super Bowl party because then it's become a cultural mm-hmm. event. It'll be interesting to see if if the college football playoff sort of has that same effect. But again, when you're only playing once a week, it's not the same as packing all of these games in all day on yeah. the same day. No, without a doubt. We want to know what you think. Tell us in the chat which ones. Maybe that should be the poll. Which one's better? March Madness? Right. or the? And, and I know, again, we haven't been able to... We can take a guess on how much fun the college football playoffs going to be. And we're going to get into the number of teams again here in a second. But we talk about volume of games. Let me tell you something else there's a lot of volume of. Your digital footprint out there that you have no idea about. I'm just telling you guys, when Delete Me, when, when we started this partnership with Delete Me, we fig- uh, had our own account. I Googled my name and the amount of information that was out there that I didn't even know people would be able to just look up and find about me, you know, uh, like where you're living, things like that. It's really scary. And Delete Me... They went through in like a good defense. They took it out. No problem. What is Delete Me? Well, it's pretty simple. It's a hands-free subscription service that will remove your personal info that's being sold online. Right? A lot data brokers, hackers, they're getting your personal info and they're selling it online to a lot of different entities, right? And they're all nefarious, in my opinion. So it's really simple. You submit the info you want to have removed online, and Delete Me's experts will search the internet to find and remove your personal info. Then you'll receive a detailed report in seven days. And I'll talk about detailed. This thing is detailed from the top to the bottom. I mean, mine looked like a, a scroll from Alexandria. It was so detailed. And you'll get that uh, your in- personal info removed every three months. It's a great product, David, yeah. especially, you know, not just if you own a business. If you're just an individual, if you're a stay-at-home mom, if you're an accountant, if you're a beekeeper, if you work for the CIA, you definitely probably need it. But it's just an incredible service. One of the pitfalls of a cyber world. You got to yep. be protected. Definitely. So make sure you take control of your data and keep your private life private by signing up for Delete Me. And now, you know how we do at Crane and Company, you get a special discount for our listeners and watchers only. Today, get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to, and here we go, joindeleteme.com slash crane, C-R-A-I-N, and use promo code crane, C-R-A-I-N, at checkout. The only way to get that 20% is you go to joindeleteme.com slash C-R-A-I-N and enter the code C-R-A-I-N at checkout. Joindeleteme.com slash crane. Use that promo code crane. Great service. You want to know what else is great? The hoodies, the candles, all type of stuff we got on our merch line. I've been smelling this candle every morning, man. It's like, like smelling salts for me for the show. By the way, dude, if you know a strength coach, you can judge how good a strength coach is on how good the smelling salts are. That was a big thing. Big facts. Big facts. All right, let's get to the Booster Club. All right, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, get your questions rolling in here. If oh, you do ask you not have about. questions? Um, but we, a lot of comments. I think yeah, but we did it to ourselves with the vest. Nice. A lot of oh, thoughts. A lot of comments. A lot of Don't thoughts. Say we. A lot of thoughts rolling around. Look, I mean, they're running with it. I can only do so much. But we're going to start it off with the boxiest of llamas. What is up, my brother? He says, I agree with you when it comes to uh, college basketball, but I do have a question for a team. Will Purdue ever make it to a national championship? And he's talking about basketball. Basketball. I'm telling you, I, I'll continue to say this. I like Matt Painter, right? But, but and, and it may be different a little bit with Tennessee, with Dalton Connect this year, but the more I look at Matt Painter, the more I see Rick Barnes. Really good in the regular season, has an identity, you know who they are, but for some reason cannot get to a certain level or past a certain point in the postseason. I still look at Purdue and what's been their downfall. It hasn't been Zach Eady. That monster's been handling business for a while. That's what happens when you're 10 and a half feet tall. The problem is I don't think they're guards, and I like Braden Smith, and they play really hard, and Lawyer, and Gillis, and those guys. But from a defensive standpoint, I don't think Purdue's guards are good enough as shooters and as defenders to make a long run in the NCAA tournament. Zach Eady's going to get his. You have to understand that. But I go back to the Purdue team that had Zach Eady, that had Travon, 
the, the, the other big-time post player they had, and then Ivy, who was a baller in the NBA at guard, and they still couldn't get there. I just don't see this team being able to do it, and I hope I'm wrong because I do like Matt Painter. I like the way he handles his business. But right now, national championship game, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say, remember what FAU did to him last year? Mm-hmm. FAU said, that's fine. We'll, we'll put our big Slovenian against your guy from seven, seven-footer island. He may beat him a little bit, but, but you know, uh, John and all those guys, they're going to handle business at guard. That's exactly what happened. All right, let's go to Michael. Or FD, Fairly Dickinson, I'm sorry. Let's go to Michael from Texas. What is up, Mike? He sees, I think what makes March Madness unique is one of the two teams that make the Cinderella run and become teams America roots for. Mm-hmm. It might be hard for something similar like that to happen in the college football playoff. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Because you're talking about the highest seed that could possibly win is the 12th, which the 12th best team in the country is already really good. Yeah, and we, yeah, we'll see what brand. I mean, that could be Oklahoma. Yeah, you no, know, uh, exactly. like oh poor. Yeah, I mean, yeah, poor in March Madness. It never fails that not only are these underdogs and Cinderellas. I quite literally have not heard of some of these schools. Like you're talking about Fairleigh Saint Dickinson. Peters? You know, yeah. like some of these schools I haven't even heard of. They're out here beating the Purdue's of the world with seven footers on their team. It's going to be hard to recreate that sort of thing for football. Even though, look, the college football playoff in, in yeah. many other Nobody's ways saying is not, going anything's to be bad or not good. Like, the sis, I didn't know Loyola Chicago. I had no idea that place even existed. Sister Jean, I didn't know she was 235 years old. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known that unless they made that run. UMBC. Yeah. What is UMBC. that? And there's always these schools, too, that just specialize in, in basketball. basketball. So you have, like, a Wichita State. They kind of, they don't come out of nowhere anymore you, because they've, they've developed themselves as a basketball player. Villanova. Brand. You always kind of, Villanova, too, is a great point. You know, these basketball schools, even to a certain extent, um, you know, when we talk about the Gonzagas of the world, yep. you know, like, these schools that have represented college basketball for so long, it's fun to, like, see them carry the torch in a sport that they just, they don't. Some it's a don't different have flavor a ice cream, team. right? Yeah. But, like, it's, it's something you don't see all the time. All right, let's go to Cody. Cody, what is up, my guys? Is we won't know if we like the 12-team playoff more than March Madness until we actually get I, to I see do it. agree with that. But I do have a feeling it might be the best. I, look, and again, I, I totally agree with that. All right, one more. Remember, we'll read donations if it's on topic. Uh, if not, we'll read them at the end. All right, let's go. One more of the Booster Club, and then we're going to move on. All right, let's go to Karen. She wants to know her thoughts. Do you believe in this uh, North Carolina basketball team this year to actually make a run in the tournament? Yeah, I mean, Hubert Davis has done it before. You've got everything you need. You've got Baycott. His, I mean, he's so big, he breaks the floor down low. Uh, and then you have, you know, RJ and, and, the, and, and you know, I like Kadu and, and some of the guys that got around him. Look, North Carolina is really talented. I like Cormac Ryan, the transfer from Notre Dame. I, th- I think he's been a really good ad. Look, I, I, it's going to be up and down, right? I, I mean, look, he lost on the road, you know, last night. I mean, Kentucky goes on the road to LSU and loses a, by a buzzer beater. Purdue loses on the road to Ohio State with an interim coach. North Carolina dropped a couple games on the road in the ACC. It happens. You go to Syracuse and get beat. It's just part of it. But when it comes down to all of the the boxes that you need to check to make a run, North Carolina checks all of them. You have the big guys down low, which I mentioned. You have experienced guards that can score the ball and go get a bucket when you need it. Uh, And then you have, again, experience having success in the NCAA tournament. So, look, at the end of the day, I'm not worried about North Carolina and Hubert Davis uh, when it comes to the NCAA tournament because they have all the factors that you need to have success. So I I would bet on North Carolina. The question is Duke. Because they're starting to look a lot. They're looking like they're figuring out. They beat Miami half like, to death that shot last me. night. I thought Miami at home. I thought as well. Half was a good bet. Uh, it was not. I have a question for you, though, on North Carolina. What do you make of North Carolina being better and, and more consistent, really, this season than last year when Baycott and Caleb Love both came back from that Final Four championship run a, the year prior? Well, I think Caleb Love took a lot of bad shots. I think that's something that he's improved on ever since he's moved on and, and went to Arizona, right? It, it's the shot selection for Caleb Love last year. It was There was no method to the madness. It was, oh, I'm Caleb Love. I'm going to shoot it. Mm-hmm. Like, like it, And if you look at the percentages and the efficiency and the way just the flow, because they're not, they're not playing a new style. Like North Carolina can, can adapt. They can be a chameleon if they have to, but they do want to run. They can beat you in half court if they have to. That's what having experienced guards and a big man can do. But I think Caleb Love took a lot of unnecessary shots last year that ended up in empty possessions early in the shot clock. I just think you're seeing a a more... I think you can make the same case for Auburn, to be honest with you. 
I mean, I know against at home against Kentucky it was one of their worst offensive performances of the year. But last year, Wendell Green would just go down and shoot the ball. Mm-hmm. Like, is it, there's no not running anything. Yeah. We're just going to play isolation ball, and it's going to be our guy versus your guy who's going to try and make a shot. But all right, let's move on from the Booster Club. Let's get to a little ACC preview here. Okay, ACC preview. Do we have? We can do. Uh, do we have a graphic for the ACC uh, win totals? Mm, let's see. We either do or we don't. We can. We can. We can adapt right, we or die. We have some. Uh, we Not have yet. some because uh, we have some reactions we can get. To. Let's get your reactions Actually, first. Let's, um, let's do that. First. Um, you you pulled this clip of. Do we have the Johnny Manziel clip? Yeah, up there. I wanted to play this one. Yeah, he was on with uh, Shannon Sharp, and I'm going to play the clip, and then then we'll comment on it. This ain't going to shock anybody. I'm leaving to go to the draft, and I'll paint a picture for you. It's 2000, the spring of 2014, December 2013, right in there about December, January. I'm getting ready to make this decision on if I'm going to the NFL draft or I'm going to stay. And I found this out five years later from my dad. But my dad went and had a meeting with Kevin Sutman and pretty much went to him man to man and was like, we'll take three million bucks and we'll stay for the next two years. And my dad says this is true as, as today as he did when he told me. He laughed. He did the same thing that he did when Cliff Kingsbury asked him to be the highest paid offensive coordinator the year before. And Cliff would have stayed with me another year and we would have ran it back and right. gone for another one. Right. But he comes to someone, he asks him for X amount, someone, pff, he had this ego about him that what we built, we was all him. You said your dad went to Kevin Sumlin. Yep. And says for $3 million. We're staying for two more. Now you do realize this is prior to NIL. I agree. This so this, so this is a a back room deal. It went on for 30, 40 years before. Yeah. It was the same way that was happening when you was getting recruited back in the day. And you guys and you Look, mm. I say this all the time. I say this all the time. And Jimbo Fisher, I think, said it better than anybody. It's like we've been doing NIL for a while. Y'all just started hearing about it. I mean, I remember my father telling me stories about finding envelopes of money in his locker. After game, they misplaced mine. So. Like it's, it's mine too. Well, it's, I, think, I had to pay them. <laughs> I, I think some. I think some people think that everybody's getting three million dollars uh, like yeah. Johnny Med. So obviously, there's different amounts, and and the the bigger the school is, the more resources they have, the more they can get paid. But this uproar over players getting paid, like and and Mike Boynton, I'll, I'll give you a, a great quote. Oklahoma State's basketball coach made a fantastic point the other day when talking about recruiting. He was like, I'm going to be honest with you. It was a lot harder to get guys on campus when you had to recruit the old school way, which is basically you have to go in there, win the living room, and be able to keep payments on the low without anybody finding out of the NCAA. He's like, it's easier to get them on campus now. I really don't even have to talk to them that much. I just give them a number to show up on campus, which to me makes it so much harder to build culture because the funny part about those backroom deals and those underneath mm-hmm. those the money that's handed underneath the table for you to go here oh now you have a Dodge Charger or or this and the other is that it kind of brings you closer together cuz it's kind of like a you know it's illegal what's going on between the player and the coach so that relationship to the player and the coach it becomes a lot more and I, I don't I guess genuine isn't the word but you both your asses are both on the line. Like it's it's just like anything you're doing behind closed doors that maybe you don't want people to figure out. It kind of brings you closer together. But this has been happening. This is why I said keep and I always say, Cam Newton. I hope the rumors that Auburn paid one hundred and eighty thousand dollars to get Cam Newton is true. No way. Because if that's the case, no we got the best damn businessmen on the planet. <laughs> no that's the best deal There's that ever no happened. No way we got. Him that's why I tell people this has been happening forever, man. That, well, that was to your point on uh, how coaching has changed now with NIL. That's that was my question to Shane Beamer because he's known as such a great recruiter. He recruited me back in the day to Mississippi State, and so I asked him at SEC Media Days last year, like, how much of your skill set as a recruiter do you get to use these days, or is it all just a financial decision, which it may become even more of that if we get to a complete profit sharing system. Now, like you said, it's not like every single kid's getting the same amount. But he basically said, yes, some kids, some kids only care about the amount of money, so it makes yeah. it easier. But he's like, I still have to go do my job. And you're still talking about 18-year-old kids who are leaving home for the first time. So I still have to go into living rooms and convince their parents that I will be a good steward of their future if they come and play football for me. So I thought he gave a great response on that. On the Johnny Manziel clip, what I find interesting is one, 
for $3 million for another two football seasons, that's a bad deal anyway, right? Like, he was— I feel like he's worth more. Well, why wouldn't you just go to the NFL? Like, his dad was going to forego another two years for only $3 million? His signing bonus alone would have been more than that, right? Ah, uh, well, I'd, I, like, I wonder. I, I'd have to I go know, back and Johnny see where it was drafted. at that point He was a first-round pick, wasn't he? I need to look at, I need to look at the see, class. I thought John was a second round. I, I need to look at the Either class way. that was around yeah. him. Uh, well, th- that was my first thing was, if you're Texas A&M, $3 million for two more years of Johnny Manziel? Oh, I'm paying that. Here's the problem, though. Like, how do you hold somebody to that? Yeah, he was the 22nd overall pick. How do Round you hold, one. How do you hold well, somebody? What was the signing bonus? What if Johnny Manziel played the next year and balled out and is going to be a top five pick? He's not coming. What are you going to do? Call the NCAA and tell him, hey, Johnny Manziel has to stay because we paid him $3 million illegally. $4.3 million signing bonus. Yeah. Like, but but uh, again, though, how do you hold Texas A&M? If you're Texas A&M, how do you hold Johnny Manziel to that? It, after For two years yeah. after the next year, if he wants to go, Damn. what do you do? Yeah, Who do you call? The Ghostbusters? The we have right now. I thought it was funny that Johnny Manziel's up here talking about somebody's ego. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, it's... I mean, that's kind of funny. That's that's a good point. What else we got? Uh, uh, the Stephen A. Smith clip. Yeah, Talking man. about Notre Dame being irrelevant. I mean, I guess Stephen A. Smith is going to continue to talk about college football as if he knows what he's talking about. Why does... Why does I just feel like Mad Dog's going to, like, try and get me to invest in, like, some stock. Like, every time I see him. I just feel like he's like that guy on that... that, that he's like, oh, my God, the stock sword. You got to take it. Bye, bye, bye. Kramer, whatever his name is. Not yeah. off Seinfeld, but you don't know what I'm talking about. All right, let's go ahead and play the clip of uh, the three most generalist people in sports media. Let's go ahead and play it. i just like to ask you both, a rhetor- or all, albeit rhetorical, i just like to throw out this question. You talk about you have no sympathy for Notre Dame. Why are they even relevant? Can somebody answer that question for me? The, the Notre Dame fighting Irish in college football has not won a championship since 1988 when they won in the Fiesta Bowl. I think it was against West Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, if my math is correct, that's 36 years without a national championship. Um, that's awful, man. Uh, well, here's what I find funny. I, to be honest with you, I don't think they should talk about college football on, on that show. I just think that they're so aloof to it. I, talk about NBA. Talk about NFL. Like when Feinbaum comes on, I guess, yeah, because obviously – you know, Mr. Feinbaum's very, very plugged in. I got a lot of respect for Paul Feinbaum. Um, how can you, on one hand, sit here and talk about the relevancy of Notre Dame and then have a whole segment that's dedicated to Notre Dame? <laughs> like, you realize how contradictory that is. Not only that, ESPN sent out a push notification talking about Notre Dame stipulations for the new college football playoff format by itself. So if, if we're going to say that if you don't win a championship in a 30-year span that you're irrelevant, are the Bills irrelevant in the NFL? Is was Georgia just irrelevant before a year ago? Yeah. But but before a couple of years ago, like if, if that's the game that we're gonna play, then are why are the Knicks relevant? Yeah, Stephen A. Why why do you just keep running your running your mouth about the Knicks all the damn time? Yeah. Like when they haven't won anything in since before Spike Lee was born or or whatever. Like so, are the Bulls who gets irrelevant? to decide the number of years? Like, after this number of years, you're no longer relevant. Like, Stephen A. Smith gets to decide that? No. no We're no, talking about one of the most iconic brands in college football history. And, and that's some, nobody is saying, and I think sometimes Notre Dame, and look, listen, my, my grandfather was a Navy man. He could not stand Notre Dame. We did not like Notre Dame growing up in my house. But I, I respect Notre Dame. I know that Notre Dame has cachet. I know that, and they just made the playoff a couple of years ago. Like this is, it's not like Notre Dame has gone in the wilderness for 40 years and now they're Bethune Cookman. Like this is one of the biggest, I, I, I wonder if, if they get some of the hate because of the Catholicism, to be honest with you. I, I think that has a little bit to do with it, with, with the university, um, which is not right. But like acting like Notre Dame's irrelevant, I, I don't understand if th- yeah. that's your line of thinking. Like there, there's no, application of this that makes sense to me look i will say any team that hasn't won the college football national championship in the last year is is irrelevant yeah that's 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 a high class problem that that you got over there i'll never listen well first a realistic i'll never listen to anything Stephen a says but i'll definitely not listen to anything he says about football yeah how did those three 
Yeah, the fact that these three guys, not, not Feinbaum, take Feinbaum out of it. Feinbaum, I'll put him in there. No, put no, him all in there. Well, well, him Feinbaum in there. Has, is tied in, in there. to the college football. I've never heard him say anything insightful. That's yeah, it's, again, I think they're generalists. I think they just say the most general yeah. things, and they're at a platform that's so big. You know, they it's like it's like he says on Kenny Powers, right on Sports Sesh. It's like we just shovel it. Meanwhile, the guy. Eat it up. Meanwhile, mind their job, colleague, mind job, mind job. their colleague who's coming on this show in like ten minutes, Tom Luganbill, I think is is as not one of the best. most tapped in about this. Like, put Tom Luganbill on the front yes. of first take and let him talk about college football. I'd watch the show again, whatever they're putting. Up. Without a doubt, like I don't want to see Stephen A. Lie about how many points he averaged in college and then tell me that Notre Dame's irrelevant in football. David Pollock. Da- yeah. Put David Pollock on there. You had the well, real one on there. Stephen A. Like, I, like, I don't want to listen to all three of those guys. That's what I'm saying. On, on, on that screen. It's not just hmm. Stephen A. Like, Mad Dog. He, Mad Dog's the reason I had to quit playing MLB. Mad Dog like, just, yeah. <laughs> Say that again? I had to quit playing MLB on Xbox. Really? Because every time before you load in the game, it's Mad Dog. Yeah. I was, he's like, hey! Yeah. You, this guy, what? He's like, you need to get him out of the It'll game. Never work. Someone He's bring, not good enough. Someone bring me a martini. Is it really him? Yeah. Oh, dude, it's like he does this with his hands dude, all the time. Just, He's like, you need to go. It's me, the mad dog. I had to quit that was pretty good. Like, like it's it's ridiculous. All right, last night again, winning on the road in high level college basketball right now is so unbelievably... T- Damn, Duke almost won by 30? I didn't realize it was that bad. Yeah, Sorry, I saw bad. the bottom line here. Kentucky at LSU. Right, LSU's got to have it. It's a chin Pokemon situation. Hoff to right? have it. They have to have it. Uh, they're down one at 74-73, and this is not your typical buzzer beater here from LSU to keep their NCAA tournament uh, hopes alive. Let's go ahead and play the clip. Going to get a miss block, block shot, back. throws it up. Shot, was that a oh. pass? Before, run it back. Like, it's a, it's a catch. If you're on audio, there was a block shot. LSU got it back under their goal, and it looked like a pass to me. If it was, this is an incredible pass. Let's go ahead and play it again. Run it one more time. Tell me what you think. Mike. Driving, has it blocked, gets it back. That's a pass, bro. I think that's a pass. I think he shot it trying to get, it, trying to get a foul, but it just went to his guy. I, I don't know. I think he was close to behind because the Because the way his arm... Release. It looked like he was sh- like attempting to shoot it. It just happened to go. If it's me, it was a pass, one hundred percent. Oh no! Look, yeah. If, if I'm the 100%. one that, I mean, at that point, just even if you're just trying to get it as close to the rim as possible to see if someone can do something like that, that's a win. I mean, you don't have any time left. Yeah, you're so. playing popcorn yeah. out there. I, I'm so glad they did this as opposed to being down. Nothing drives me crazier than when people are down one point at the end of the game shoot and they have the last possession and they shoot a three. Like, either one, you're unbelievably selfish, or two, you are awful at math. It's one of those two things. And God, I hope it's the second, to be honest with you. Because we can fix that. <laughs> I can get you to count to three. At least I hope, right? Uh, all right. We uh, got, any, got anything else there? Are we good to rock it? No, up that's here, it David? for me. All right, let's get back to the Booster Club. All right, let's go to George. Or what is up? Remember, if you donate and it's on topic, I will... Reed is his irrelevance, irrelevancy would pertain to Nebraska more than Notre Dame. Notre Dame has been consistently at the top of college football, while Nebraska has been mid for years. I can understand that argument, but I still don't think you can call Nebraska irrelevant. I think irrelevant is such it's basically final to me. Like you you have, have been it's been moved on. Can and I don't want to disrespect any military academy, mm-hmm. but like Army. And you remember they used to dominate back in the day. Yeah. And Navy, now they're irrelevant. They're not winning a national championship. But guess what? I don't want them to be the best at football. You know what I'm be the best at? Like being snipers and jumping out of helicopters and stuff. But they're when it comes to championship, they're irrelevant. Let's be honest. The group of five, when it comes down to, to national championships, they're irrelevant. That's irrelevant. You're not winning it. So to use the word irrelevant, maybe you could say they're in the darkness. You could say Tennessee had been in the darkness for a while, but that doesn't mean they're irrelevant. I, I just I think we need to make sure that we understand the finality, in my opinion, uh, of that word. But speaking about finality, you know what's final in my book, David? Hmm. There's one meat company out there that's above the rest. They're not Group of Five. They're not Power of Five because they're all alone. All right, and that's good ranchers. They're the number one source for 100% American meat that I trust. 
at our house. I know you trust it at your house. Oh, yeah. You trust it at your house, Blaine, as well. I've been trusting it. And you need to switch from the grocery store to Good Ranchers because right now, when you subscribe to any of their boxes, you'll secure their leap year offer of free bacon for four years. I don't know how you can find a better deal literally around the globe than this. All right, let me say that again. Their leap year offer of free bacon for four years. That's over 70 pounds of applewood smoked bacon that you'll get just by subscribing. I don't know what else we can do to y'all. For y'all, not to y'all. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Pick your box. Use our code booster, B-W-O-S-T-E-R, and get the meat you can trust from a company that shares your value. Whether it's steak, seafood, sh- pork, whatever, they've got everything chicken. The chicken's fantastic as well. Make sure you go to GoodRanchers.com. Use that code booster to claim over $900 in free bacon before their leap year sale ends. GoodRanchers.com. American meat delivered Free bacon. You're welcome. I love it. Thank God for good ranchers. Good ranchers. Good ranchers. There's um, okay ranchers, there's decent ranchers, and then there's good ranchers. I, uh, I do find the Nebraska comment um, fascinating, though, that he brought up because, obviously, they've won national championships more recently than Notre Dame has. They dominated the 1990s, had several Heisman Trophy winners, Eric Crouch. But if you just take the last two decades, you'd rather have Notre Dame's past 12 without a doubt Nebraska yeah. and in terms of like the trajectory but whenever you use the term irrelevant I think the only thing that comes into play is has the fan base and really the powers that be at the administration like given up on that specific program you can't say that about either of those schools no. Nebraska is still setting records for home attendance for God's sake yeah, they sell the, out the spring game yeah. let me tell you something yeah. anybody that sells out a spring old. game yeah. ain't irrelevant buddy. good point yeah alright let's uh, speaking about some, uh, something that could be irrelevant oh. here soon the ACC uh, win totals uh, from Bet Online. Go to betonline.ag. Use that promo code Booster. Okay, at least while the ACC is somewhat intact, it's weird to see SMU. It's weird to see Stanford, and it's really weird to see Cal. Cal is at six and a half, boys. With Justin Wilcox, remember he was on the Heat last, uh, hot seat last year. They almost beat Auburn, but the one I want to start off with is Clemson mm. at nine. And a half. You return Cade Klubnick. You know Garrett Riley as OC. Dabo Sweeney is going to Dabo Sweeney it again, right? Moral Dabo wins out. They're not going to the transfer portal. They're they're going to keep continue to do it uh, his way. Which look, you know he's built that place up into what it is. But let's go through the Clemson schedule. Nine and a half wins. Are we going over? Are we going under? Want to know in the chat who's your best bet on the board if you can see it? Uh, if you're listening to us. We're going to go through them after we get to Clemson's schedule real quick. All right, let's start off week one. You're starting off with Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good luck with that. It's tough. Um, then uh, week two, you got App State at home. When? NC State at home. When? Stanford at home. When? At the fighting Mike Norvells. They go to yeah, How much, State. man? Mm. DJU. You're, you're going 2 4 to state to play a team that's going to be led by DJU, former Clemson quarterback. But you know what? I, I think he's Joe Milton, dog. I think, I think DJU is Joe Milton with a little bit of a, a, a le- less arm. Not that mm-hmm. DJ has a bad arm, but he just can't make the routine throws routine. But you know what? I think Florida State finds a way. Really? At home? At yep. Dope Campbell? All right. Yep. So that puts him at three wins so far. Yep. All right. At Wake Forest. Win. Virginia at home. When? Louisville at home. Lu- Louisville. 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 Come on, Louisville. 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 <laughs> oh, Miss Louisville. Like molasses. Like molasses. Then you have Virginia Tech on the road. Wait, are they beating Louisville or not? Louisville. They, get they got at Louisville home. at home? They got them at home? They got them at home. When? Then they go to the roads. Uh, to the road? To, on the road. To listen to Sandman. So at Virginia Tech, yeah. when? I kind of saved that a little bit. <laughs> All right, then you have at Pittsburgh. Not an easy place to go win at. I don't know. Did you watch them last year? Yeah, I know. I mean, trying to tell everybody about Jerkovic, right? Because a, a certain guy at the Senior Bowl told me, don't trust him, don't trust him. I tried to tell all the Pitt fans. I caught more. You remember that last year? I caught more hell from Pitt fans. Love it. Pitt fans. Love it. They're real. I'm not talking about the Steelers. Okay, talking about Pitt college football fans about picking them to win three games. Guess what happened? They won three games. Man. Mm. Anyways. Now you're a genius, dude. 
Thanks, right. buddy. Then we got. Thank you. A lot of people say I give off uh, that you're very invested. We got to think of something else. That's I'll the third time I've heard that me, today. Give, give me some. All right, then you got the respect. Citadel at home. Appreciate your service, but you're going to lose. Yeah, then you have South Carolina at home to finish the year. Win. So, I like the over. Yeah. Um, all right, so they open with Georgia. Mm-hmm. They get Florida State on the road, but we talked about DJU. And, yep. and you do get Louisville at home. So long, long. I don't know. See ten and two in there. Yeah, I don't. I I wouldn't touch it. I I I like the over. From if I had to take it, I like the over. But let's see. So Clemson is at nine over under nine and a half. Florida State and Miami are up there too. You got Florida State and Miami both uh, the over the over runners at nine and a half. And you got Louisville at eight and a half. I think that's the only eight and a half on the note. North Carolina's at eight and a half. NC State is at eight and a half. Then you go down Virginia Tech seven and a half. SMU with Rhett Lashley. Shout out to our boy. Uh, at seven and a half, at six and a half, we've got, it's just tough to tell, Syracuse. And then Cal, as I mentioned earlier. Then Georgia Tech at five and a half. I can go ahead and tell you boys where I'm leaning on that one early. Uh, you've got, man, that's the only five and a half I see. Then you got Stanford, like I said, three and a half, Virginia, four and a half. Um, let's, go, let's go to that Georgia Tech schedule. Georgia Tech and SMU right there, David. Those are two that I think. One of those may end up being the best bet on the board here. Because you've been liking the over for Georgia Tech, right? I have, yeah. I thought Haynes King made one of the biggest jumps last year of, of any quarterback that really nobody talked about. I thought Brent Key and that staff and Deerman and them did a really good job of, of fixing Haynes' mechanics a little bit. I know they snuck that win out at Miami. They're not going to sneak up on a lot of people this year, but five and a half, what's their schedule? Like? All right, Georgia Tech, week one, you're starting off with FSU. FSU? I thought, State. I thought, no, it's Clemson that plays. Georgia. Yeah, we just read it. Okay. Yeah, that game may be in, uh, that game, that game may is. be overseas. I feel like. Yeah, it, that game. The Is that game in like Ireland? It looks like that's not in America. That's a soccer stadium. Yeah, it's, that, that's, that's. Aviva Stadium. Aviva. So this is Georgia Tech, right? Georgia this Tech. is Georgia Tech, correct. Yeah. Yes. Georgia State week one, what do y'all think? Loss. Loss. Yeah, Georgia State week two at home. We'll see who gets Georgia that job. State, Bill McGeer or, or Buster job. Faulkner. Yeah. Uh, which uh, either one of those hires uh, would, would be fantastic. Give me a win. Uh, you got at, on, you're on the road on to Syracuse. Win. VMI at home. Win. At Louisville. Louisville. Loss. Loss. Duke at home. Win. At UNC. Loss. Notre Dame at home. Loss. Loss. At VT. Win. win. Okay. Miami at home. Lost. Miami's going to be pissed. NC State at home. Win. Da, 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 da. You go to the road on Georgia, to Athens. You go to what? You go to uh, Georgia. Loss. Yeah. That's over five, though. That's, 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 that's bowl. You're bowl eligible. One and one, one and one, two and one, three and one. All right. We're just going to say yep, this. Yep. I'm going to take the over. I'm I like that. Over. Give me that over. Like over. Well, boy, this that's is. That's your best bet on the board? Not, not yet. I, I tell you what, though. What? You know, we, we pride ourselves on segues here, okay? And how beautiful is it that the minute we're talking about Georgia Tech, okay, our boy Tom Luganville pops up on the screen. Lugs, Georgia Tech, <laughs> five and a half. Your thoughts? My thoughts is I was chuckling to myself watching you three knuckleheads count how many wins you could get on your fingers. With well, Georgia we can't Tech. see it. Uh, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm relying on. If you need on, two hands, that's good. That's yeah. Good if you, I, if you, I, I guess so. Listen, I can count to I, 11 D. Well, the, the challenge is when you go to Georgia Tech trying to pass five calculus classes. That's the challenge. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, counting's yeah, just all you know getting. That, do you know that no matter, regardless of the major, you have to complete five calculus courses. That rule sucks. Hours. I don't get that. Yeah, then why aren't you bad. just a math school? Yeah. <laughs> well, engineering, math. Eh. Student athletes going favorite. by the wayside. That's what Nick Saban. Yeah. Can you can you count to eleven? Athletes. Can you count to eleven? That's what I care about. Yeah. No kidding. I listen. I I tend to agree with you. I think the incremental improvement that we've seen this Georgia Tech program make under Brent Key's leadership. And there's a belief now, like, I almost feel like he's got that team going into games, believing they're going to win, not wondering if they can. Yeah. And um, so you're saying that number's five and a hook? I go over on that. I, I know, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, especially they if you sneak listen, one. If they, don't screw up, if they don't screw up Bowling Green and Virginia last year, they're already there. 
Yeah, the Bowling Green one, man. Come on. Now you can say, listen, if Miami takes a knee, yeah. you know, that's that's one more loss. Yeah, sure, but sure. but 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 I will say, I and, and I mentioned this a second ago to Cohen. I thought Haynes King made a huge jump yeah. last year, you know, mechanically. It's still not perfect, right? This isn't like baseball or golf where you can have some funky thing and that's okay. Like it's it's tougher at, at this position. Phillip Rivers is really the only one I've seen kind of get away with it. But when you look at Haynes King, he made a huge jump. I, I want to say in the, at the quarterback spot, though, uh, Lukes, and I also want to talk about your new podcast, which is fantastic, my friend. Uh, really, really, really enjoy, you know, obviously anytime you're talking ball. DJU at Florida State. <laughs> I, I, I love DJU the person, right? I, I think he's a really good leader. I think he wants wants to to obviously do everything he can to win and, and to make himself as good as possible. I just don't feel like he's a natural thrower of the football. I think he is Joe Milton with a little bit of a weaker arm. That that's just the nuance isn't there to me, man. He can't make the routine throws routine. You could not be more correct on your assessment. And I've said going back to that first year with him as a starter at Clemson, um, even going back to that first game against Georgia, um, he's just innately inaccurate. Yeah. And you can't be innately inaccurate and be successful consistently at the quarterback flip, at the quarterback position. You talk about making the routine plays routinely. Um, but I'll tell you the other thing he can't do. He can't do things off platform. He yeah. can't change arm angles, right? He's even more inaccurate when you flush him from the pocket. And so through Clemson, through Oregon State, and now what we will see this fall, don't we already know what he is? For sure. Like we, know, we know exactly what you're going to get. He's going to airmail throws over open guys. Then he's going to make a really pretty throw to the outside on the comeback. Then he's going to miss the standing still wide open hit. He's going to bounce it in the ground. And then he'll make a couple of plays here and there, and then he'll revert right back to missing guys on routine throws. That's what he is. I'm sorry. It's, I mean, it's, Tom, it's, Tom, we had this same com- – me and you and us here all last offseason had the yeah. same uh, conversation about Joe Milton. And, yeah. and yet, and yet, you still have people in the offseason, Joe Milton's going to win the Heisman. Joe Milton's going to be the SEC – at some point, <laughs> when you show me who you are, I'm going to believe you. That's not saying yeah. people can't change. That's not saying people can't get better. But at the end of the day, after four years of watching <laughs> this wide open guys and make the yeah. same mistakes over and over again, it's hard to put that new – what did Mike Leach say? If I'm having to teach you how to be accurate at this point, you're just not going to be accurate. So if you guys had to yeah, pick one can. of those two guys, who would yeah. you pick? Joe Milton or DJ Youngle to start your team? I would pick DJ Youngle because I've at least seen like the five touchdown performance against Wake two seasons ago, like games like that. Well, again, they both. I've actually I've seen DJ Youngle actually layer of football. One? Yeah, it's, can we triple option? <laughs> you have to take one. Yeah. You know, um, I would probably side. I would probably side with Joe Milton because he does have some God-given ability, I think, that supersedes DJ's God-given yeah. ability, and maybe not by much. So if I'm going to be wrong or we're going to miss, I, I want to miss looking pretty, I guess. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I feel I was – guys, I was on – real quick, I was on the sideline. Josh Heupel's first year, second week of the season, Tennessee playing host to Pitt, right? And we had that broadcast. And Joe Milton, we'd seen what he had become at Michigan, so we kind of knew what the sample size was. I knew going into that game, this guy's going to spread the ball all over the place. It's going to look like a fire hose. He didn't make it past the first quarter until Josh Heupel yanked him, put in Hendon Hooker, and the the rest is history. Now, why did he yank him? Not because he wasn't necessarily playing bad. He was missing wide open people for touchdowns, not covered guys for touchdowns, wide open guys for touchdowns. And you just, if you're going to consistently do that, which he does, and if you can consistently be inaccurate like DJ is, then like you say, you keep showing me what you are sooner or later, I'm going to believe you. Yeah. Per- permission to make a baseball comparison here? Please. I would take Joe Milton yeah. for this reason, because okay. yes, he is. And, and again, I'm not saying this isn't the best of, uh, case scenario. All right, this is just these are the two quarterbacks I have to pick them. At least with Joe Milton, 
I know that defensive coordinator has told that secondary, for the love of God, nobody can get – there is there is not far enough where you don't have to worry about the deep ball. Like, it's right. almost like being – it's almost like facing a guy that he's got – he throws 103, and his, his off-speed is awful, but just the fact that he throws 103 makes you have to worry about it. Therefore, it yeah. makes the off-speed a little bit better. That would be the reason that I chose Joe Milton, just because of the fear that this dude can legitimately throw at 90 yards. So when I say we're running man free, and I tell you free safety, you get your ass in the sky, that means you get in the sky and you're deeper than the deepest. I don't care if he runs into the next yep. county, which should open up some things underneath, including in the run game, I think, a little bit. Listen, I... I, and I and I get irked sometimes. And David, you played it. I played the position. I coached it for almost eleven years. I get so irked when people continually talk about arm strength. I agree. Arm strength. Arm strength. Arm strength. Arm strength. Quarterback play is about two things. Two very simple things: accuracy and decision making. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. If if I have a quarterback that's six foot, one hundred ninety five pounds who consistently makes the right decision, is decisive in doing so, has the aptitude to process, and puts the ball where it's supposed to be when it's supposed to be there, I don't care about the 6'5", 235-pound guy that can throw the ball 80 yards. I don't. And you will never convince me to either. I agree. I'll take Kellen Moore all day. I'll take Kellen Moore all day. There's a back-to-back Super Bowl champion in the NFL right now who's beaten a lot of guys who have stronger arms than he does. Very true. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, Tom, I want to I want to ask you about the college football playoff, right? Officially, we have a 12-team playoff entering this season. We have the 5 plus 7 format. And we had that format for about eight hours before <laughs> sources here with Pete Thamel say the idea of a 14-team 14 14 college football playoff was discussed by the CFP management committee meetings in Dallas. Nothing is imminent, but it would begin in 2026. <laughs> I said this when we got the 14 playoff. Before Larry Culpepper <laughs> even graced us, with his presence on the Dr. Pepper commercials, people said, well, we need eight already. Here we're already talking about 14 before we even get you on to talk about 12-team playoff. What are your thoughts about all this? I don't even think there's 12 teams capable of winning the national championship. But we got to make sure we give everybody an opportunity, right? I mean, we're and I, and I hear the phrase, my good buddy Barrett Slee always says, we're, we're trading access for excellence. And my response to that is, okay, I can see that viewpoint, but eventually we will get to the excellence the problem is, is unless something starts changing in the college football landscape, it's still going to be the same four teams. You might have an anomaly. You might have a year where somebody gets hot and goes on a run. But here's what nobody's talking about. And I talked about this with FCS coaches when I was doing playoff uh, games on TV this past fall. They're like, you have no idea the, the battle of attrition that it takes with a roster to survive a regular season. Oh, God. And then have yeah. the gauntlet of the playoff in that many weeks do you understand the depth the luck the talent the quarterback play that you're gonna have to have for four straight weeks to do that how many teams are built that way five Mm. maybe six maybe six and i understand we want to give the group of five team a a shot or we want to give you know the team that's sitting there maybe it's utah at 11 or something and we want to put them in there but does anybody actually believe they're going to win the national championship? They're not going to win. It. No, no, no. They're not. I'm sorry, and, and that's nothing against them. But now we're in this new NIL world and the transfer portal world. All we're doing is widening the gap. We're not narrowing the gap. We're making all the teams that already have all the resources bigger, better, and stronger. So they could put 12. They could put 14. They could put 16. I'm here for all the games. I love it. I'm I'm in. But I don't think it's going to change who we're sitting here looking at when we get to that top four. Why don't you make the point that you made to me when I said similar things a couple years ago about how po- the, the possibility of expanding the playoff may lead to more parity in the years to come. Yeah, uh, and, and I want to make sure when, when we say parity, I, I don't think we define it well enough. I, I think when, when we say parity, what I mean is I'm not saying there's going to be 30 teams that can win the national championship now. I'm saying that there are Maybe we, maybe years like last year will become the norm because I think last year was an anomaly. This is what I keep hope. I'm hoping last year wasn't an anomaly. But if you look at the past, it was. There were more teams that could win a national championship last year 
than I can remember in the previous 10 years. Yeah. Like, like the amount that. of teams. So I'm hoping it's a new norm. I'm not banking on it. But what I do think is, and again, the Power Five and the Group of Five need to split. I think you're going to see that split probably here pretty Great. soon. We, they need to split. The Group of Five needs their own national championship. I think they should have their own 12-team playoff. playoff. I'd love to have three I'd, sets yeah, of playoffs. I love it. Power Five, Group of Five, FCS, put it in a bucket and pour it all over. <laughs> but Sign me when, up. Yeah, when, when, when I look at, at parity, what I mean is, now with the 12-team playoff, and, you, and obviously – Teams with similar resources are going to have similar results in recruiting with NIL, right? Because money talks at the end of the day. So in the world of, of the high-level power five, being able to go in there when everything else is even, I can give you this amount of money, they can give you this amount of money, but coach, your team never makes the playoff. And we all know that NIL is very important, but it's the second most important you know, three-letter acronym or whatever is that starts with N and ends with L. Because NFL still makes you more money than NIL ever will. So guys are looking for that pipeline still. Well, what is the best tape you can have? It's that playoff tape. That tape of Alabama playing Michigan is a hell of a lot more valuable than Michigan playing Rutgers. And these kids know that. So I think being able to go in the living room and say, listen, here at Texas A&M, we made the playoff. We showed you that we can do it. We can pay you what Bama pays you and what Georgia pays you. Here at Tennessee, we made the playoff. Here at, at, at... you know, uh, let's say UCF, we made the playoff this year. We're a growing brand. We can pay you. Mm-hmm. I think you talk, you use the word access. I think it gives you credi- more credibility in the living room, even if you're an eight seed. Even if, imagine, think about the NCAA basketball tournament. How many more people knew who St. Peter's was and maybe made the decision to go play at St. Peter's after they made that run in the NCAA tournament? Why? Because it gave them credibility. So why did Shaheen Holloway get that job at Seton Hall? He had credibility. He can go in that living room and say, listen, we can pay you this, and we got a chance to win the whole damn thing. Not the Meineke Car Care Bowl, not just the New Year's Six Bowl, but the whole thing. Now, it's not going to be a huge increase in parity, but I think it may turn what I thought was the greatest year I've seen in college football in a long time, which was last year because more teams could win it for longer. Maybe that's the new normal, and maybe that'll help us get there. I'm, I'm hoping, but I actually think there's some validity to it. I know so, that was long, but sorry. No, no, listen, I, and, and again, I'm for more games because I obviously love the sport of football. And I, but I also look at the seating and the 5 plus 7 model and things of that nature. And, and if you take a look at, let's just say, Alabama and Georgia last year, or Alabama and Georgia in 2021, right? What do you think Georgia would have done in the college football playoff last year? Oh, in the state of that team, whoa, like that team, it, first of all, it would have been Georgia and Michigan for the national championship. I agree with you that. Agree? I okay. agree with yes. that. And that was the one team that Georgia, that Michigan would have struggled with the most, in my opinion. I agree opinion. with that. I agree with that right. as well. So now we're going to look forward and that Georgia team last year would what be the fifth or sixth seed, which is mm. fine, and that's going to happen. That poor twelfth seed. That's going to happen a lot. Well, the <laughs> sixth the six seed because Florida State would have been the fifth. Just remember that, Tom. Correct. Yeah, oh. they, can't make, they can't make the four team, but they're right there at five. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine backdooring your way into the twelve team playoff? You're like, guys, we're an eleven seed. Yeah. Which means we're going to play a six. We got a chance. And like, and the six is Georgia. Oh, Georgia. No. <laughs> yeah. But like, I look at this that's year. What I'm saying. Yeah, so I'm saying eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How are you supposed to beat those teams and do it three weeks in a row? Yeah. Well, and and two, uh, Matt, again, like the conference championship winner of the, the Power Four now gets that automatic one through four seed. So yep. you could have a team, Clemson goes undefeated the whole year. Let's say they're dominant. They lose the ACC championship game. Now they're 12 and one, and you're the five seed playing the 12 seed because, you know, I keep using this example. Pitt beat you in the ACC championship mm-hmm. at nine and three. Now they're the four. But Tom, like, what worries me, what scares me to death, is I look at this year and I look at Georgia and Ohio State and I'm like I don't I don't know if there's anybody close. I mean I don't know if there's anybody close right now. Just to be honest with you. Yeah, and I think the other thing too that's different now at this time of year than it's ever been before is because of the transfer portal. We're all kind of scrambling to navigate rosters and to figure out like first of all where is everybody? Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Number two. 
Number two, at what point are we going to have this backfire on somebody? Because it's going to. And I'm not saying it's it's Ohio State. But if you go out, right, in the transfer portal, and they, you could make an argument they did one of the best jobs of any team in the transfer portal. And you start paying big money and those guys don't perform, then what? Right? USC. Then what? Yeah. No question. The difference is USC, though, is USC stinks on defense. They're yeah, going to continue yeah. to stink on defense because they got no players and the coach doesn't care. Okay? I agree with that. But – Ohio State's got dudes on defense. They needed a couple of the you know pieces of the puzzle. And I saw them in the Cotton Bowl up close and perks, and they're they are really, really good. So, but at some point or another, a lot of this NIL stuff, you better be sh- sure that you are paying really mature mm-hmm. people that understand the gravity yeah. and the magnitude of what it means when you start earning a lot of money on your end of the bargain to now perform and earn that money, right? Because That's why I think, like a Caleb Downs, I don't worry about Caleb Downs one. Caleb Downs loves football. Caleb Downs is going to be a top 10 pick. He's an absolute difference maker. Pay him whatever you want. I had Nick Saban tell me he's the best freshman secondary player he ever coached Alabama outside of Minka Fitzpatrick. All right? Mm. Pay him whatever you want. I don't worry about him faltering. I worry about the guy that's a one-hit wonder, goes on the market, makes a bunch of money somewhere, and doesn't perform worth a damn the next year. I, I, I think that's 100% true. It's like they say, listen, they made Napoleon the emperor of, of Europe, and his ass still ran when it, it got tough. So imagine some of these guys, <laughs> yeah. you know, at, at, at the end of the day. But uh, quickly to the Booster Club with uh, our buddy Tom Luganville. All right, Tom. I know, uh, I know Tom. Actually, Tom's got a role. Uh, I, I know you got a heart out. Oh, you good? You got time. Okay, good. Okay, I know you took- yeah, go Okay, good. Perfect. All right, Tommy. What is up, my guy? We're going to start off with definitely not Drew Aller. All right, he wants to know, hashtag ask Tom. Most Penn State fans aren't too familiar, familiar with our new offensive coordinator. Can you shine some light and give me your opinion on how do you think he will mess with Drew Aller and how will the offense for Penn State look coming into the year? So, Cole Nicky might have been one of the most uh, sought-after coaches in each of the last two cycles offensively if you haven't had the pleasure of going back and watching kansas on offense yeah this is one of the most well scripted um difficult to defend offensive schemes there are a ton of moving parts shifts motions personnel groupings a lot of backfield wrinkles and eye candy they kind of look a lot like what the kansas city chiefs have morphed, morphed into in the last couple of years with a lot of their single wing concepts and so, number one, you're getting a phenomenal X's and O's guy that has done it going all the way back to Wisconsin Whitewater when he was when he was coaching Division mm-hmm. Three football and winning national championships there. So the proofs in the pudding scheme wise, I think he'll do remarkably well. Going back to Drew Aller, I think a lot of this too is he's pretty athletic, and I don't think that they utilized that much last year, and I think that this guy will because they want the quarterback. Um, you know, whether it was. Um, uh, Jason Bean, and then the guy that got hurt that was a Big 12. Jalen Daniels. Jalen Daniels. Yeah, Daniels. Jalen Daniels, who I thought was a dynamo. Drew Aller's not that guy, but he's athletic enough to be utilized in the yeah. scheme as a runner and to move the pocket, to change the launch point. I think it might actually be a better fit than what they had had previously. Hmm. Uh, I, and I don't know if there's any offense that puts more pressure on safeties than what Kolanicki did at Kansas. Oh, I, I, I mean, it's, it's every play. It's corner, vert, post. Poco, it's it's every play if you're a safety. And you can with never play downhill like back, that. With Go some ahead. type of backfield action. That's exactly so you right. you get the guys peeking in the backfield when they're it's not tough. supposed to be. And now you got eye violations and guys are running right past you. You better line up right. You better yeah. line up right and yeah. say you better understand dividers and, and impliers and things like that. But, uh, Tom, tell everyone, number one, thanks for hopping on, brother. Tell everybody yeah. about what you got uh, going uh, it's fantastic <laughs> stuff, man. You know, I saw you on Instagram the other day, and me and you text back and forth about it. Well, I've, I've been everybody's been pushing me to do more social media stuff, and and as you guys know, and you know me, and you've seen my social media presence, I really ha- don't have one aside from family stuff and things of that nature. I've never been a big self promoter in that area. I'm not one of those guys that's on the sideline handing my phone to somebody, say, "Hey, take yeah, a picture of me and so and so." That's just that's just not me, and so. I've really kind of pushed back on it. And I've had so many people saying, dude, why don't, why don't you do any of this stuff? Everybody's doing this stuff. And it's just kind of never been my thing, to be honest with you. It's been a little bit cringe. And so I have really pushed and I've pushed and I've tried to talk myself into it. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create this blend between recruiting, 
in college football, little nuggets, little snippets, little things that through my coaching and playing and broadcasting and scouting career that I've kind of put together over a number of years. And um, I'm calling it the college football blitz. Luke is college football blitz. Luke is a recruiting blitz. I'm going to do scouts takes on high school recruits that are really nice. young that nobody knows about that I'm coming across on film, little 30, 45 second snippets on guys you need to know about that you don't know yet, but you will know this guy because of X, Y, and Z. And then, you know, something as simple as yesterday. I don't know if you saw my post yesterday uh, in 60 seconds, how to succeed as a scholarship uh, yeah. athlete academically. I love that coaches don't simple. hate NIL one too. It's, it's that yeah, stuff that people don't hate NIL. Yeah. It's, they don't, you know? it's the, the nitty gritty stuff. Yeah. So I'm kind of diving into some of the, the little things and, and I've got, you know, I'm always jotting down. Oh, that's a good topic. I'll hit on that one. Oh, that's a good topic. I'll hit on that one. So probably doing more like snippets, shorts, things of that nature. I do have a, a YouTube channel, uh, the real Tom Lugan bill. So I'm going to do maybe some long form stuff on there, but guys, to be honest with you, I'm just getting started. I've been a linear broadcaster for 20 years now. This is, I use social media, but it's a little bit foreign to me. So truth be told, I have no freaking idea what I'm doing. But I do have thoughts. I do have commentary. I do have content. I do have analysis. And I'm going to start putting it out there. Well, Tom, you're a Fort Knox of knowledge in, in yes. the football world, man. We love having you. It's fantastic stuff. I've checked it out. Go follow Tom on all social media Thanks. platforms. It's great stuff, man. At the end of the day, real recognize real, my friend. And we appreciate you joining us. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good and have a great week right. and a great weekend. You See too, you brother. One of the best all in right, the guys. biz, Tom. Our buddy Tom Luganville giving us some time. All right. You want to get to call in, Dave? Let's do it. We got some guys on the line. I want to get to Will in New Jersey. Oh, Will. he called back. Yeah, Will. Bongo. Yes, I am back. I Sorry about yesterday, guys, and sorry about the lack of the accent. Oh, no, listen. It's, Don't uh, apologize. Hey, first apologize. apology is accepted. The second Will. one, I just, can you it's just, do, like, can you say something about Jimmy's John's? Oh yeah, let me go. Uh, let me go get a Jimmy John. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Uh, that was good. That was as far as and then you, uh, wait, wait, then you go and do something like that. Yeah, and totally, totally redeem, redeem yourself, yourself. William. Well Look, I know about the two-year-olds hanging up the phones, man. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. They're, you know, all they're the worst, well, dude. Yeah. You know, kid's a ninja. He just snatched it. Well, wow. I was all ready to go, and he, you know, he's good. I, he I may be a future I, career. I, yeah, I may yeah. be upset, but that doesn't mean I'm not proud. Exactly. That's how I felt. Uh, so, Dave, I, I uh, actually messaged you on Instagram the other day. I was calling in to defend Scrapple. Uh, yes. Oh, my oh, God. We yes. Will. Wow. We yeah. actually Will. 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 do this. Tell them. I, I, am, I am tired of the disrespect. And Thank you. Let me just start by saying you guys were talking about college basketball teams you never heard of before. And the two that you listed, Fairleigh Dickinson and St. Peter's, what state are they in? The great state of New Jersey. There you go. Oh, wow. I know where Rutgers is. <laughs> I know Rutgers. But, <laughs> Scataway. Scrapple. So, Scrapple, if you guys don't know, it is it is basically pork that's all just kind of mashed together. And is it visually appealing? No, it is not. No. But is that's it how delicious? you know it's good. Oh, it's certainly uh, good. It's, it, it, just, it, just, it reminds me of the part of the water boy I, when they're eating dinner. I just, and, the, and the coach looks. He's like, what part of the... What part what of the snake do you think that? And the mom's like, well, if I had to guess. A snake really don't have I paws. Think I think it's, 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 it's his, his knee. knee. <laughs> hey, hey Will, Will, here's what I'll say. Number one, I thought anytime you have to say, hey, that's like saying, hey, it's just a bunch of chicken mashed together. Like pork <laughs> is already together. So what parts are we mashing Don't ask questions. It's like together. a sausage. You like, like that's, you I don't feel like worse, you, don't you? Nobody says, oh, oh hey, you, eat you just worse? got that Good Ranchers free bacon for four years. It's just bacon Meanwhile, both together. of them will eat a hot dog with no questions asked. Okay? Uh, exactly. exactly. Well, it's exactly. not, yeah, it's not called poople or scrapple. It's or, well. Just, it's a hot, it's a hot it's dog. dog. Yeah, I know. It's just. Listen, you know, you, you like pork chops. You you like bacon. There's there's probably a little bit of that in there. It's, it's no, the not in my bacon. A lot of it, I think a lot bread. of it has to do with the name. Yeah, it's, you it, can't have the it word. It sounds like crap. I'm going home to eat a board game. Yeah, yeah what's, the look of it. I just feel like that's it. what Stalin gave the Russians. They will. Like when the they economy, will. Yeah. This is the best part about all this. Because, see, I already know, and you know, too. I know how this is going to end. Because these guys aren't so Don't 
act like you know. If they okay. eat it and they love it, they'll admit it. I'll they're admit not, it. They're not good. After it's I like me, eat Nutella and This sardines, is going to be my Bucky better. situation. I clowned Bucky's. These guys tried it's to tell not. me. I wouldn't listen. Don't I said, ever. it's just a gas station. And then I went in there and it's Disneyland for adults. And now it's my favorite place. Don't this is how it's going to be for Scrapple. Bucky's Blaine's going to go to breakfast with us. Scrapple in the same Blaine's going to go to breakfast with us one day, Will, in New Jersey. And he's going to order Scrapple because he doesn't even like I will. I promise you, and I can promise anybody who's listening to this show, I will never order Scrapple from any place I go. If you make it, Dave, well, I, I, yeah. Well, I don't if think you, you go it, and order order Scrapple. I think you're walking into Cracker Barrel. Like, I'll take some biscuits and gravy and Scrapple. I think that's something like spam. Like, if you're do, do, like do, Vienna do, sausages. Do places make Scrapple? Yeah. And go buy it. Okay. Yeah. Where? Where? Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. What? You, yeah. See, you, even Will you said. Where he's you from. Can go to like a, you can go to delis in Jersey, and if you want to get like a breakfast sandwich, instead of getting, not not all of them have it, but you you can go, instead of getting like a bacon, egg, and cheese, or a sausage, egg, and cheese, you can order a scrapple, egg, and cheese. Thank you. Let bro. me get a scrapple. Hey, hey, it's like, it's yeah. like uh, hey, man, listen, <laughs> I uh, listen, I need a scrapple, I need a ham and cheese, and I need you to kill Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to do those three things. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Will. Will, thanks, man. Great call. Uh, We're going to try scrapple on the show one day. Thanks for, uh, thanks for defending but, me, man. Let's not eat that poison from Australia. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Have a good one, guys. See it you, sounds buddy. good. Now, listen, there's a, there's a lot of questions about what's in scrapple still. But there's no question about what's in Provia. And that's a secret ingredient. It's called Provia pill. Oh, okay. No, it's not <laughs> Scrapple in there. All right? And if you're tired of seeing that receding hairline get deeper and deeper, I mean, if that thing is running away like it's afraid of you, or maybe it's that thinning spot in the back of your hair that's getting larger every time you look in the mirror, which is impressed you can see the back of your head while looking in the mirror. Don't worry. You're not the only one. Provia, they're here to help you. You got premature hair thinning that runs in the family? You can stop it because we beat genetics with uh, Provia. It guarantees more hair on your head and less in the shower. And every package includes a full 60-day supply of Deprovia Serum plus, buckle in for this one, Blaine, Deprovia Super Concentrate for more faster, more noticeable results. You might be asking, Jake, how could this get even better? Well, guess what? Right now, finish off your amazing results with their perfect beard treatment as your, as your free gift at checkout. So don't wait. Your full, thick, luscious Hair starts today. Order now and save an extra 10% at proviahair.com slash booster. P-R-O-V-I-A dot com slash booster. It works. Or you get 100% of that money back. So ditch those hats and show off that amazing hair of head today. That's proviahair.com slash booster. Turn your hairy situation into a hairy situation. I'm going to make that work. It's going to come super to concentrated. I super, love it. Uh, nobody's ever concentrated Starting harder seven. than Probia. All right, David, who's concentrating next? Christopher in Florida is super concentrated. Like God, Christopher, how concentrated are you right now? Hey, what's up? What up? What's up, Chris? Okay, I have a question about the Houston Texans. Okay. They have, like, surprised me this year. Do you think they're going to be a formidable franchise over the next couple of years, or is the one year thing? C.J. Stroud and Tank Dell have blown my mind with their combo. They're, they are fierce. But, I mean, like, I don't know. I'm I'm just concerned if it's going to be, like, a long, formidable career for both of these guys. Or yeah. just a one-time thing. What, what do you think? Well, I, I always say, and I say this, again, I know I'm using a ton of baseball references today, but but I enjoy doing it. How C.J., what D'Amico Ryans and the Texans did was unbelievably impressive. And, yes, you've got C.J. Stroud on a rookie contract. Mm-hmm. Yes, you've got Tank on a rookie contract. You got young guys all around you. I mean, it's it's a it's a great situation. But how do you adjust to the adjustment? Yeah. Right? This is what we always talk about. You came in and got them year one. You got a you put a lot on tape in the NFL. They are going to adjust to you. They are going to auto-correct to you and D'Amico Ryan's how he coaches schematically, what he's doing. How do you adjust when they adjust? We see this in Major League Baseball all the time. That up-and-coming young pitcher co- makes his uh, major league debut, first two starts, just shoving it. You're like, oh, my God, this guy may be the greatest pitcher of all time. Well, then the book gets out on him. And now, all of a sudden, he's got to adjust to how the, uh, hit- the hitters have adjusted to him. That's what's going to prove longevity. So there's no guarantee, but I tell you what, every time I turn on the tape of C.J. Stroud, every time I see the way the Texans players react to D'Amico Ryan's it just feels like a perfect combination. It's a Goldilocks porridge situation. Man, oh, oh, this this porridge may be a little bit too cold. 
Oh, this porridge is a little bit too hot. Ooh, this C.J. Stroud, D'Amico Ryan's porridge, that porridge is just right. There's a reason the phrase sophomore slump exists. That's exactly right. The book does get out on people. Thanks for calling in, Chris. Chris, great Appreciate question, it, man. Chris. I hope so. I like D'Amico and C.J. I'm yeah, re- even though C.J. was pretty discourteous to me about what he said about Auburn the other day. I just I find it funny that Ohio State <laughs> players trash an Auburn team that actually won a national championship. Y'all couldn't beat What did he Michigan. say? So He said that Auburn sucks. Is that what he said? Yeah. CJ so Stroud said Auburn sucks. Nobody cares about him. But Cam Newton. Well, one more Natty's than you did. Wow. Yeah, I see it. I'm surprised he said that. I know. <laughs> All right. We'll keep an eye on that, Christopher. Just guys being guys. I love it. Appreciate yeah, it, man. It. All about. right. Let's go to uh, Jack in Florida. Jack, Jack, what's up? Florida, baby. In the house. Good morning, gentlemen. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Jack, I love when you call into this well, hey, man, I got a question about the NFL draft. Um, I'm a Vikings okay. fan, and last okay. season we showed that we have no bench for quarterback. What quarterback, if any, do you think will be available at number 11, or do you hmm. think we'll be going with an edge rusher like Jared Burst, like some people have been predicting? Well, here's here's where I'm at. It's when you when you talk, I thought Josh Dobbs came in and did a pretty good job. For if we're going to be honest, for for kind of the situation he, that he was he in. Did. Um, but he you want to be more prepared than that. I, I get what you're saying. The question now becomes, is it worth getting a guy to Jordan, basically Jordan Love a guy? That's that that do you want to get a guy yeah. for, you know, the kind of not that Kirk Cousins is going to be done playing when, when it ends at Minnesota, but I think his best years are probably going to be behind him, right? And and at some point the Vikings fans right. are, are gonna want to move on. Do you go ahead and start that process now and lose a chance to get an edge rusher? like a Jared Verse from Florida State that you you missed, or somebody that can help you win right now, yeah. right, to balance that team out. To me, if you if you feel like, because I'm looking around at the NFC North right now, and if you're the Vikings, you either, in my opinion, got to make the decision, look, the Packers are coming, right? The Lions are already mm-hmm. here, and the Bears may figure yeah. it out, as crazy as that sounds. So are you going to try and make your run now? Is this the, we're going all in with Kirk Cousins, he's at the end of the rope, yeah, he shops at TJ Maxx, which we do too at my family. But do are we going to believe in him? You know, re, are we going to try and surround him I and go so. win right now? You've got Justin Jefferson, mm-hmm. right? You've you've got some pieces around him. To me, I I, I think you can get a quarterback at some point, mm-hmm. right? Or maybe you can go get a Hendon Hooker, who's backing up Jared Goff to maybe be the replacement or a guy that's holding a clipboard that that you may like. I I would I would try and surround Kirk. That that's you know, what I would name do. that I keep hearing, and I. I still refuse to believe it at this point, especially as high as 11 or even in the first round. But I'm hearing a lot of J.J. McCarthy, McCarthy talk yeah. to the Vikings, which, you know, that would yeah. go completely go against the strategy of what you're talking about to go all in this year. Yeah, I, I just feel like you you mm-hmm. if you're going to go all in, you better do it now because, again, the Packers are young. The Lions are young. Mm-hmm. The Bears are young if you're going to be, you know, with, with the way they're building it. So either you're going to try and be the old man Right, that 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 can slick talk the the young lady, or you're gonna have to just hey, let's get a new guy in here for Breeze Brothers fresh start. Who would you take at eleven, Blaine? Well, when it comes to winning, if you want to win the Super Bowl in the Vikings and Kirk's coming back, I think you take a defensive player at eleven. I, I agree. With that. Gun because this quarterback, the the draft, the 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 depth of quarterbacks in this draft is is so much. If it's me, I'm drafting. I'm looking in that. Secondary range, a Terry on Arnold, yeah. a Kool Aid McKinstry, mm. one of those guys who can well, come in and make an impact right yeah. now. And then I'm for maybe a third round pick. I'm looking at a Spencer Rattler, right? See, I don't hate that like, at uh, all. Uh, I like. I actually, I like. I still think is he going to be there? That is Spencer going to be there? I think there Spencer. In the third? Obviously, he moved up a little bit from the performance at the Senior Bowl, but right now they're projecting him as a third, fourth round pick. Okay, you like that, Jack? That's, that's pretty good. I like that. That's a good yeah. perspective. Here's, here's, what, here's what I think you do at 11, like Blaine said. Who's left that played defense mm-hmm. on Alabama or Georgia? Yeah. That's what the doubt. Eagles did. They're like, all right. No, uh, we, undoubtedly. Yeah. I, I think that may be the play. We we'll love it, Jack. Hey, Jack, call thanks, in buddy. as the draft gets closer, all right? We want to be hearing your thoughts on this. Man, that was fun live streaming yeah, the draft last year, too. Yeah. God, you bless too. You God, God bless you, your new family. God bless you, Jack. Love Thank you, Jack. Have a good day, All right, bud. let's go to Hayden in Illinois. Hayden, how you doing? Hayden, what's up, buddy? What's up, y'all? How you doing? Doing good, good man. man. That's what's up, guys. All right, so 
couple thoughts this morning. Um, you guys were talking about DJU, and uh, I just moved up from Florida. Not a big college football country up here in the Midwest. Uh, that's okay. I'm learning to get by. <laughs> but it seems like, you know, there's a lot of doubts about DJU. I, I myself was a, a fan of him over Cam Ward when the transfer portal kind of was open and we mm. were kind of going back and forth between the two, right? And obviously Miami got Cam Ward. But the more I, I looked into it and, you know, was watching some film and whatnot, the number one thing that stuck out to me was the person who made me eat my word was Jordan Travis. He was inaccurate, right? He was terrible outside of the pocket, yet he made the biggest strides I personally have, have ever seen um, from a year-to-year basis. And I just can't see him getting into this program, DJ, and not making leaps and bounds. Granted, it's his last year, right? But Jordan Travis, from his uh, his last two years, I mean – from from his first few, I mean, he he made incredible strides, and I just can't see how Mike Norvell and Tony Tokars won't just develop him. In fact, his his visit was uh, just a film review with Mike Norvell, and immediately uh, DJ in an interview, you know, came out and was saying how much he has to learn and and how uh, adamant he is that he can grow. So mm-hmm. I do have uh, I've had pretty big hopes and expectations for uh, DJU in uh, his last year. Um, yeah. What do you guys think about that? Hayden, here's what I'll say. And and listen, I think, and I believe we said this two years ago on, on Crane and Company, is Jordan Travis, we talk about Haynes King making that leap. Jordan Travis made a big jump two years ago, and then obviously last year it culminated in his best year. But I, I think Jordan Travis showed his ability to be a nuanced passer. There was room for development there when you watched him play, right? It wasn't... Just that he just had a strong arm. Every, he would make some nuanced throws every now and then. But the difference between DJU and Jordan Travis is Jordan Travis was such a threat with his legs that it opened up stuff in the passing game. That I, not that DJU. I'm not saying DJU is paraplegic that he can't run or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But he cannot operate an RPO zone read style or create the way that Jordan Travis did. Uh, inside and outside of the pocket, in my opinion. And that's what Lugan Bill was talking about. And I think another thing that Jordan Travis did really well was Jordan Travis, when he got outside of the pocket, could throw on the run and throw off platform almost more naturally than he threw from the pocket. I thought the biggest jump that Jordan Travis made was his ability to sit in the pocket and deliver throws Agreed. instead of going have going and having to create. And Jaden Daniels did the same damn thing, Hayden, if you really look at his progression as well, right, in what they did. So I think DJ is such, not saying he can't get better. And I hope, like I said, I really like the guy, man. I, I like the way he handles his business. I like the way he, you know, he talks about his faith and things like that. But I feel like we know who he is at this mm-hmm. point. Um, can he get better? Yes. But I tell you what. Having Johnny Wilson outside helps a lot. He ain't there anymore. Having Keon Coleman outside helps a lot. He ain't there anymore. Did Jaheim Bell co- – no, Jaheim Bell was at the Senior Bowl. Yeah. He's not coming back. Not that Florida State's going to be bad on the outside, but I think there was a lot that went into that Jordan Travis progression, right? You had a little bit of everything. I just feel like DJ used a little bit of a, a step down from that. But, hey, I'm rooting for him, buddy, and I'm rooting for Mike Norvell. I think he should bring the braids back. Yeah. Thanks for calling, yeah, Hayden. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What just quick, quickly to to exit out on you guys. Um, that's a big point, Mike Norvell. I I think with that being said, with DJ, I think if if we're not careful, we might see a freaking you know talk about you know the March Madness Cinderella stories and how it's so fun to watch. You know, Florida State they're they're not a small brand, right? So they're not necessarily a Cinderella story. However, um, not to get into the whole debacle of being left out of the playoffs, but. You know that's a, that's the story you want to watch, right? Mike Norvell for sure. planned around his true, his true freshman quarterback to win an ACC championship game using wildcat, et cetera, being very conservative. Whereas at times we've seen Mike Norvell go for it on fourth and four, you know, on his own fifty, and and it be su- uber aggressive. So I just think Mike Norvell is a, is a great uh, game planner, and man, I'm just excited for 2024. And you know, I, I agree. Happens. Be excited. That's I, the, I agree. If anybody can turn don't scrapple. Don't get down based off yeah. last year. Man. If anybody can turn scrapple into filet, it's Mike North. Well, yeah, I love yeah. it. I wonder if there's any scrapple in the Midwest. <laughs> That's where it yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, uh, appreciate it, Hayden. Hey, 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 call hey, in hey, more, hey, man. Oh, we appreciate it. All right. 
We got two callers on the line. Let's try and get to both, guys, all right? Let's try and get to both. Marcus in Iowa, you're on the line. Keep it to 30 seconds here, please. Hey, guys. uh, What are we doing with the college football committee? Why are we expanding it to 14 teams? It's stupid. (laughs) I think, personally, they need to be to eight teams because (laughs) if you go to 14 teams, teams, do you really think that the 14th, uh, ranked team is going to win the national championship. No, they're going to get spanked like TCU. And who's going to win at the end of the day? It's not going to be the national champions. It's going to be all the advertisers, ESPN, Fox, whoever it may be. What do you guys think? Yeah, uh, first off, Marcus, you had 30 seconds and you absolutely nailed it, buddy. Uh, <laughs> sh- shout out to our boy, Marcus. Eight teams would be the perfect number to me. And you know what? There would not be any outrage, in my opinion, if somebody said, you know what, let's go from 8 to 10. Like to 10, I think you'd have less outrage. 8 is the perfect number, Marcus. Please call in again. I'd love to see what you could do with a minute. Thanks, Marcus. Appreciate it. Hey, call in, call in next week, buddy, and hold down Iowa for us. Look, I'm, I'm really excited about the 12-team playoff. I like the number 12 now. I think, but I'm just more worried about the fact that it'll never stop expanding. You'll yeah. never be able to... to We've got to triple, we gotta triple Six, the already double 68 profit. 68 teams, David. David. It, will ne- like, it, it wasn't eight. even out for eight hours. Yeah. But let's hey, get two more teams. I do think a 12 12C can be to one. What is what is Kylo Ren? What what is what, well again? That's, in football, in, yeah. in yeah. football, that'd be I, I like think it's a possibility. It, yeah, the, it'd have been, it depends on who the twelve is. Yeah, it'd have been LSU versus Michigan. I'm taking it'd Michigan. Been fun. You I'm want to talk you, about? Yeah, yeah. Michigan would have ran for seven thousand yards. <laughs> in that game. Blake uh, Corum would have won three Heisman's. Michael in Texas, you have thirty seconds as well. Do you think Michigan would have run for seven thousand yards against LSU? No, they wouldn't run for 8,000. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so true. So true. All right, You're the so last I'll caller of the week, good. buddy. All right, I'll make it good. I want to make a stipulation for Flaming Dragon Friday, uh, Friday tomorrow. Talk Let's get it. Um, so, all right, so this is for David and Jake. Neither of you can hit the over. Because, Jake, if you hit the over, I say next Monday you should be referred to as Mr. Fourth and Thirty One. Oh, oh my see, God! That, see, but that hurts me. Oh, yeah. Michael! Now, mm-hmm. I, I, David, deal, David. deal. Uh, <laughs> be still, right, David, my heart. Uh, David, what's mine? <laughs> uh, David, I'm. It's gonna I'm hurt. Sorry to do this to you, but if hurt. you if you hit the over, you should be referred to as Mr. Trouble with the snap. Oh, oh. man, I, yeah. But well, I hate to do it to you, but did I have trouble <laughs> with the snap? Mm. I thought you were going to go with Appalachian State. That would have hurt. That's what. That's where I, I thought I, of it. That was. That, it was a close. It was a. It was a tough call between the two. It was Appalachian mm, State or okay. a couple. With Let's the hope snap. I don't have trouble with the snap because word is I might be trying out for the uh, arena football. <laughs> yeah, league. Code yeah, may be yeah. trying out for an arena yeah. league this week. Trying to out for the Michael. AFL this weekend. We'll see. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see how it he's going to go play for the Alabama Banditos. Oh, yeah. Michael, a lot of good ideas yeah. right there. Yeah, great job, it, Mike. Man. Michael, always love when Michael Appreciate calls it. in. Um, Thank you. I think a different week, one man. for Jake because that hurts me as well when I say it. I don't know. Look, I will. You want to talk about not hitting the over? Son, I will sit here and stare into the camera for an hour and a half not to have to say that. We'll play a game called, well, it'll, it'll be the, the Helen Keller hour on here. You just won't hear me. Not a real person. I don't know why we can't. Uh, all right. Bets, then we're going to get to Donos, and we're going to get up out of here. All right. All right. Last night, one and one Thank you, Providence and Xavier. I mean, UAB. I mean, we can't beat Rice. I'd hate to see what y'all do with, with potatoes. More like Rice. Um. FAU, SMU, over 153 and a half. Mm. Like a lot of points in this game. That's at minus 115. Then Northwestern, right? Uh, at home, minus 12 and a half over. I'm sorry, David. Michigan, that's at minus 105. Yeah, I almost took it as well. 0 and 2 last night. No one's talking about it, though. So I'm going to take FAU, minus 6 and a half tonight, minus 110. And then Campbell on the hard court as well, minus 9.5, minus 110. Ooh. Campbell's got a, a really good team there. they got some good guards. Really good baseball good, team, too. Good, uh, and fire soup. And guess yeah. what? The can- guess what? <laughs> Great soup. Guess, what, soup. guess what Campbell's mascot is? Camel. The Camels. Because the Campbell they're the Campbell Camels. Camel. Come on, man. Yeah, I'm taking them minus 9.5. Yeah, and they make, a, they make a hell of a oh. soup. I thought today was hump day, too. I was going to Campbell's hump day. That was yesterday. That's Wednesday. Uh, all right, move your fat head, Jake. I can't see. Uh, give me Rutgers plus 15 nice and pass. a half because they're playing Purdue. Nice handwriting. Thank you. Uh, then give me Ohio State plus two and a half 
at minus 102. Did you see the interim coach at, for the Buckeyes after they beat Purdue? What did he, he do? He, he, he teared quit? up. I'd he got quit. emotional and he teared up. So they can't make fun of Sharon Moore anymore. Yeah, it's like, what if he quit? He's like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Lakers, I'm here. All uh, right, a couple donations to finish out. Let's go to Ryan Gade with a $5 donation. Ryan, appreciate it. Do we need to make a real-life Lady Ballers team with G League players? Maybe then this madness of men and women's sports will stop. That's who the cowgirls were. Exactly. Yeah. All right, let's go to uh, Chase Mills with a $5 donation. Appreciate it, Chase. What do, what do we think of Sooners fans can expect out of David Stone in year one? I mean, look, I, I, I'm... Always try and limit expectations. Here's what I think overall for Oklahoma. I would be very patient. You can talk about David Stone. I'd be very patient with Jackson Arnold. That's the one I'd be patient with. I think eventually he's going to get it. It may be a little rough this year. David Stone's D lineman they signed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, sure. um, I believe he's 6'4, 275. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, solid. Brent Venables in defense, I believe, okay? All right, let's get to the poll. Which Two one donos is today? We got to get on our job, chat. Hey, don't look. We don't have to have, I'm just, have y'all's just money. You're good. Being facetious. Uh, which one is better, March Madness or the college football playoff? And I know it's tough because we haven't seen the new one yet. God, I feel like this is close. But in your mind, envision it. You go first, Ed. March Madness, 54%. God. That's pretty nice. Doesn't that March feel like March Madness, I got a price is right. I'm 55%. I got to play mm. the numbers game. March Madness, 48%. Percent. Big football fans in there College today. Football playoff. Big football. I'm not. Fans listen. In there I'm today. not. I'm not upset at you. Uh, and it's February. It's only. It's going to be awesome. It won the poll. It is going to be. The awesome. Hafta Hava. All right. Well, we're excited. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks to Tom Luganbill. Got a great show Luz. for you tomorrow where we're interviewing wrestling phenom Kane. Kane, aka Mayor Glenn Jacobs of Knox County. Actor, yeah, you're not going to want to miss that one. Uh, we're doing our SEC win total over and under preview as well. That's going to be fantastic. No, and a no. Super Bowl edition of Huddle Up. Huddle Up. Yeah. You have huddle to up. Huddle it. You have to huddle. I'm so glad we're not talking about Scrapple tomorrow. I know. Appreciate you guys. And just like the chances of the Vikings Thank taking a quarterback at 11. Card midair. Mid go you're going to throw yours? Yeah, I can hit your card midair. Just you. don't hit me in the face. It's probably going to hit you. In the it's eye. probably going to hit you. Going, going, gone. I hit it. It tipped. The corner. Gone!